So this weekend, Motorsport broke some new ground with the launch of its all-female lineup in the W Series. And I'm very excited to say that joining me, we have Lucy Mawson, the W Series correspondent here at Autosport, and also Jack Benyon, the international editor. Um, guys, welcome. Um, this is a very exciting time because the W Series kicked off in Hockenheim at the weekend. Yeah. Um, there's obviously been a lot of chatter mm -hmm. about this new all-female lineup. We've got 18 drivers, yeah. six Six races happening in the championship. Started this weekend in Hockenheim and finishes um, in Brands Hatch at the beginning of August. Mm -hmm. uh, but Lucy, you were there in the yeah. thick of it all. <laughs> Tell us, what was it like? Um, what are your views and, and, and is it an exciting championship to be involved in? Yeah, so first of all, it was very wet and very cold at Hockenheim, which are less Lovely. than, uh, <laughs> they're the less than perfect conditions to start the uh, championship off, definitely. Um, but no, it was very exciting to be there. And it's obviously, it's supporting the, the DTM championship this year um, so it's in their support paddock and it, it looked like it fitted straight in they had a very lovely fancy um, hospitality unit it was very F1 um, I know it was really great to be there it's very exciting to be there at, at the start of something that, that might make quite a big difference in motorsport exactly because obviously this is a, a massive thing you know we've talked about it for for years you know women in motorsport mm. where do they fit in why has there been such a lack of women mm. getting the opportunity to showcase what they can do um jack what's your view uh, do you think it's a good thing to have an all-female lineup in a motorsport championship, or do you just think perhaps maybe it's that the grassroots opportunities just haven't been there for women so far? I think my initial thought were, was that it's it's a very obviously a very controversial topic, um, but I like the fact that women can compete against men on an equal footing in, in motorsport. And my background is from club racing, and mm. seeing that happen at the grassroots is is incredible. When you get a you know, a really good female driver who can really show herself to be as good as the men in a, you know, in a lower down formula. That's fantastic to see. And I have to say, when I saw that W Series had been announced, I was a little bit upset that maybe the money wasn't going more towards the grassroots to, to stimulate that, that funding lower down. Um, what we did learn at the weekend was um, they've obviously picked 18 very good drivers. There was, mm. it, it just looked like a proper F3 race. And that's probably the biggest compliment I can give yeah. W Series because the, the conditions were wet. It was difficult. Um, we saw a few mistakes, but nothing that you wouldn't see in a, in a normal F3 race. Um, for, for me, looked like the cream rose to the top. The, the drivers who were expecting to be at the front ended up there. Um, and, and some of the other drivers have got a bit of work to do. But from, from the opening weekend, like I say, I wasn't you know, particularly a, a big fan initially of, of, the, of the format. But I think what it has done has, it has, has put women at the, at the forefront. And we can't... If we want women to compete more in motorsport, we can't just keep doing the same thing over and over again and expecting the same, you know, for, for, to have a different result. Mm -hmm. So we've got to mix things up and do something different. And although I don't think it's particularly good to segregate women, and I like the fact that they get to compete against men, I think it looks like, you know, doing something different has paid off in this first weekend, and hopefully the series can build on that through the rest of the season. Absolutely. Um, I mean, I know a couple of the drivers were saying, you know, it, it, the reason that they didn't necessarily get to showcase their abilities was because it came down to not having the right funding and having mm. something like W Series gives these drivers, these really talented young females, the opportunity to showcase what they can actually do. Um, it was great to see. Let's have a quick chat about, uh, well, I suppose the weekend kicked off with Jamie Chadwick on pole position, <laughs> which was always good to see. I mean, I think she's a phenomenal driver, yet the youngest uh, and the first female to obviously win the British GT Championship. Yeah. She's won a Formula 3 race as well. Um, how do you think her, her weekend panned out and what do you think her hopes are for the championship? Well, I think she had a, a pretty dream weekend. She topped every single session. She was on pole by almost two seconds and then she won the race. So it really can't get much better than that. Um, and I think going into the weekend, it was probably difficult to bet against Chadwick because she's the driver who has the most recent single-seater experience. She's already won a championship this year. She's um, MRF champion in 2019. Yeah, so I, I think she was happy with the weekend. Um, she said, um, yeah, she said that she was really impressed with, with how it had gone. Um, it's interesting that there was a lot of focus on her dominating, which of course she did. She led every session. Um, but I think also... In the earlier sessions, um, there was only about two seconds separating the entire top ten, which are the two seconds that she got for, you know, she'd extended that lead of almost two seconds by the end of qualifying. But I still think it was quite a closely matched field. Uh, but yeah, certainly Jamie rose to the top, like like Jack said. I think the competition's going to be really close this year, and I think the, the, the wet qualifying probably has 
sort of uh, swung it a little bit. Yeah, yeah, because she's got like Lucy said, she's got the most experience in, in mm. current single seater formula, and I think that experience pays a lot when it's wet. You know, she, she probably knew where she could push the car probably a little bit better than some of the other guys who are coming back from four years maybe out of single seaters mm. like some of them are. And in the race, we saw a lot of people coming through the field from from the back, like Miko Kiyama, um, Garcia was really strong as well. So you know, we had some really good performances of people coming through the field or people maybe not qualifying so high up but work their way through to the front. So that that says a lot about the rest of the series. And you know, when the when the weather is dry, mm -hmm. got a lot more chance of seeing some other yeah. people come to the front as well. I don't think Jamie will have it all her own way. Um, let's talk about the incident on that first lap. <laughs> so big crash there between uh, Megan Gilks and Emma Kimi Linen. Um, do you think that is a consequence of having maybe some quite different experienced drivers yeah. on the track together at the same time? Yeah, I think it is, and it just builds on what Jack said really. Um, Kim Alainen had been left out of position. She'd had her runs in qualifying impeded by traffic, so she'd not had the dream qualifying that she wanted. Um, and then she'd stalled at the start, which obviously left her a little bit out of position and moved her back towards the, the back of the grid where Megan was. And I spoke to Megan after the race and she admitted she'd like held her hands up and said, it was entirely her responsibility. Mm. The crash was her fault because she'd not had experience of running a Formula 3 car in the wet before and she just happened to, she went onto the, the wet line and that was it. And it ended Kim Alainen's race, which is a shame because I think Kim Alainen could have possibly challenged Chadwick and, and could have been up there among the front one front runners. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think it is just that experience level that, that caused that. Um, so where do we think Kim Alainen can go from here? Because obviously there are only six races in this championship. One of them, sadly, uh, the, the points are off for that one. So five left to go. Yeah, five left. And I think she said herself that she was disappointed most in a, in a DNF this weekend because it does make the championship a, that a little bit harder um, for her. Chadwick got 25 points for the win um, and obviously Kim Alainen got nothing um, so yeah I think she she was left lamenting that I think mm. on Saturday but she said um, that she's going to do everything that she can to go ahead uh, and win all the races from here on out um, it's also worth saying I think that for Z the next round at Zolder all of the drivers are going to swap cars um, mm. so they'll all swap cars and they'll swap mechanics so nobody Chadwick for example won't start the race in the same car that she won this one in um, and W Series has done that to really like have that even wow. playing field so there's there's no question about what could be happening there in a one make series I think with the with the Kim Alainen incident as well, I think that could have happened to anyone, to be honest. And you know, it was a mistake uh, from from Gilks definitely. But if you look at the DTM race, I watched both the DT DTM races over the weekend, and one of them was just uh, just before the W Series race, I think. And there was uh, quite a few mistakes at that corner. It's, there's always mistakes at that corner, even in Formula One. People don't get the braking right for that corner and run wide at the exit. It happens all the time. And if you put uh, your front right wheel on the on the wet inside there on road tyres, then that is going to have a massive effect on on you locking up. And I think what we're again we're coming back to the fact that a lot of these drivers don't have relevant single seat seater experience recently mm -hmm. so this is a you know for for those guys for, for everyone in the field to be so close to Chadwick effectively over the course of the race distance was really impressive for me because it means they've got up to speed really quickly over the course of the weekend maybe their practice or qualifying hasn't gone so well but it bodes well really well for the rest of the season for for keeping the pace with Chadwick for the rest of the year and what's your view then I mean the fact that obviously you want to keep it on a level playing field so that it's it's all about the driver rather than about the car but um you know, swapping your engineers, your mechanics, your team, that's quite taking it to a really extreme level because you need to build a bit of a relationship with someone over the course of the season because it's all about your relationship with them, giving them the right kind of feedback so you can make adjustments and tweaks to your car. Um, so do you think maybe that's taking it too extreme or do you think it will... Um, in the end. I'm not sure. I did ask a couple of drivers about this because they worked with the same engineers at the test and then yeah. at the first run at Hockenheim. So I did say, is it going to be really annoying to start mm. from square one at Zolder, basically? Um, but they said that they, they, they have built that relationship. And I think it's really interesting because obviously racing is all about building that relationship with your engineers and your mechanics and ensuring that you can communicate effectively. And I think maybe um, in W Series role as kind of... Um, not like a feeder series, but the way that it's trying to shape and just provide so many different resources for its drivers. I think it's really, it could be helpful in a way that you're able to make relationships, quite strong relationships and communicate very quickly um, with a variety of different people within the team. Uh, definitely. Um, and just finally, Jack, um, I think David Coulthard, uh, he's obviously part of their presenting lineup and um, uh, I think he's the chairman actually of the board of W Series. Um, he recently said that this would be, you know, a brilliant uh, a race that would sit on a Formula One weekend uh, instead of at a DTM weekend. Do you think that's that's where you see it? Do you think 
that opportunity will be there in the future. It's got a, lot, it's got a long way to go to achieve that level and a lot of funding that's needed. I mean, I cover Formula 2 and, and Formula 3, so I see the two support packages that are on the Formula 1 grid and the amount of money that goes into those, mm. both drivers paying, the teams, what they pay, and, and the cars themselves. So it's a, it's a big step up in terms of... In terms of money, but in terms of the the ambition, you know, started the program by saying that you know I didn't think this was the best idea, and what I saw over the weekend was really impressive. Mm -hmm. So I think continue to build on that through through the next few years, maybe. I think uh, realistically, I don't think they'd be expecting to build a Formula One package anytime soon. But three, four years, maybe down the line, it's it's possible. And if you can continue to keep bringing through women drivers like this and yeah. prove that they're, that they are good enough to compete against men, then why not why not be on the support package for F1? Excellent. Final words from you, Lucy. Obviously, you've just experienced yeah. it. <laughs> Got an exciting five races to go. What can we expect? Yeah, I think I think like Jack said, I was really impressed at the end of the weekend, and I think that they did everything that they needed to do to prove a point. Obviously, there's been seven months since it was announced, and there's been quite a lot of conversation and debate. And is this the right thing to do? Is it not? I think the weekend at Hockenheim probably proved that it might be. You know, it very much is the right thing to do. Um, and yeah, if what was seen on um, Saturday afternoon inspires one other person or one little girl that was watching the TV to mm -hmm. want to be a racing driver, then I think that that's that's what it wants to do and that's what it will do in time. Absolutely. Well, guys, thank you both so much for joining us. Thank you. And uh, enjoy the next race. Where is it? It's at Zolder in two weeks' time. In two weeks' time. Yeah. Brilliant.